More than anything, a spreadsheet like Google Sheets is a container for data. And one of the important things to remember is that data comes in lots of different forms. A lot of it's numerically based, but even then you can format it in many different ways. And there is also non numeric data. And Google Sheets can handle a huge amount of this. And I want to show you some of those variations so you know what you can put in and adapt to your own purposes. The most obvious one, of course, is just plain old numbers, like this integer, 1587. You put those in there, Google Sheets will usually put them flush right, text is usually flush left. You can type those in, you can get a lot out of just those kinds of counting numbers. On the other hand, you can also get proportions, which are read like percentages. So this is 0 0.87 is the same as 87%. In fact, if you want to see it as a percentage, you can just take that proportion and you can click here on the format as percent key. And there it is. It even gives you two decimal places, but it's obviously 87%. You also have the option of just typing it in as 87%. I'll do it like this. And that also works as a percent. If I press the percent sign there, now you see how it works. Now, there's one thing you don't want to do, and that is type in a number 87, and then think if you do this, it's going to turn it into 87%. It turns it into 8,700%, which is obviously not what you want. So you need to start with a proportion, the 0.87, and it turns it into percentages. You can also put in a number like pi, and you can decrease the decimals, which is good because pi has infinite decimals, so we can make it a little smaller if you want. Or if you have a number with a lot of decimals already entered, and I'm using the pi function here, you can increase the decimals. I don't know that you really need a lot more, but they're available if you want them. Now, often the information you're going to be entering into a spreadsheet is going to be financial. You're going to have money. You're going to be keeping track of purchases and payments. And you have several different options. One is the accounting format. So if you're an accountant, you're familiar with this, but you come up to format to number, and then come down here to accounting. And what it does is it puts the comma in for the thousands, it puts the dollar sign way over here. Okay, that's pretty easy. You can also do financial formatting, which is similar in certain ways. I'll come down here. And you'll see it puts in the comma, but otherwise it doesn't have the dollar sign in it formats a little bit differently. And there's also currency. And you can set your local currency in Google Sheets. I'm going to use dollars, that's where I am. And so you can see now it puts a little bit differently. And it's three different ways of representing the same information. Now, I realize they're slightly different from each other, it becomes a little more pronounced when you make the numbers negative. So I'm going to put a negative there. And now you see it puts it in parentheses. That's a common thing in accounting. And with financial, it also puts it in parentheses. But when I come to currency, and I put a negative, it sticks it in front of the dollar sign. So a few different ways of dealing with money, depending on what's the most common practice in the work that you do. You can also put in dates, you just type them in 7 slash 16, it'll format them. And then I'll show you in another video, there's a lot you can do with dates in Google Sheets. And you can also use time. So for instance, 10, 10, 31, just enter it as hours and then colon, minutes, colon, and seconds. So those are all numbers, and there's a lot of things you can do with numbers, but Google Sheets is able to handle a lot more than that. It's able to handle, well, for instance, it can handle text. So you can just type in words, and it turns out there's a lot of functions that allow you to deal with words, and I'll give you examples of those in a later movie you can put in web links. If you type in a valid web address, I just typed in datalab.cc, my address, it recognizes that as HTTP, although it should be HTTPS because I have an SSL certificate. And those are live links, you can click on them, and it'll take you there. So here, for instance, I have my website datalab now opening because I had it here in the cell. The same thing works, you can put email addresses in there, it'll work a lot of different ways. You can put web data, this is an interesting one, this is a special function. 
that calls in Google Finance data. So this is today's stock price for Google. $1,066 a share. And by the way, notice we get this little uh, disclaimer down here at the bottom. If I were to delete that, the disclaimer would go away. Of course, you can use formulas, and I've used a few of them already and have a lot more to say about formulas. So for instance, the formula that pulls up this data is Google Finance, and then in parentheses and uh, quotation marks, Goog, because that's the uh, symbol for Google and financial markets. And one other interesting thing you can do in Google Sheets that you can't do in every spreadsheet is you can include images. Now, this is an image that is on the web. It's, it's my company logo. And you do image and then you put the URL for that image in quotes. Nice thing is if I make this cell bigger, that you know, it increases in size as well. So you can put an image in a cell if you can link it from a URL. I'm going to put that one back to where it was. And then finally, you have the option of including floating images and a number of other things. Let me give you an example of that. I'm going to come right here to insert. You can put in a chart, an image, a drawing, a form, check boxes, comments, and I'll talk about a lot of those. Let me just insert an image for right now. The one thing you need to know when you include an image, I'm just going to get one off of my desktop. I got my data lab icon. The one thing you need to know is that it's a floating image. And so it's not in the cell, you can drag it around. It's also really big, I'm going to make it smaller. So it's not linked to the cell. And that's a little different from this web image that we have in the cell. But it is possible to include this information, especially if you're trying to build up a repository or even have sort of a branding with your uh, spreadsheets, it gives you many different options. And so what you can see from all of this is that Google Sheets is able to serve as a container for a lot of different kinds of data, each of which might arise in different circumstances in your own work.